Ke Zampala, I am Diki Chodan, currently working as a school guidance counselor at Changanka Middle Secondary School. To talk a bit about myself, I've done my undergraduation from uh, Sikkim Central University in BSc Psychology and done my post-graduation in guidance and counseling. I'm also an internationally certified addiction counselor and currently a member of Bhutan Narcotic Control Authority's COVID-19 response team. Before we begin, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to Hazer Events for coming up with such an innovative and uh, informative show and of course for having me here. Uh, the whole noble intention of the team to come up with such an initiative has really fascinated me. Uh, if you have been following this show, you would have already had a picture about why mental health is very important and why it is important to talk about it now more than ever uh, because the world is facing a pandemic. Mental illness has been a global issue and Bhutan as a country is no exception to it. However, what we need to understand at this point is uh, we need to work together and there's an elevated need of collaboration as an individual, as a family, as a community and as a nation. To start off, let me give you a brief background on the counseling program and the process of counseling in the schools. I am among the 147 certified school counselors in the country, uh, guided by Career and Counseling Division under the Ministry of Education. We also have five additional counselors in the division who provide counseling services apart from uh, their roles in the division. It's because of the support uh, from different stakeholders for psychosocial well-being that counseling program has reached to where it is now, especially the support rendered by Ministry of Education. After the school closure due to the pandemic, the mode of counseling programs and um, services has also changed respectively. Since then, Sherry Counseling PH has also come into front line and as a means uh, to reach out to school different uh, areas, school counselors have also resorted to um, various modes of um, reaching out, especially remote counseling, which basically means uh, using social media and online platforms uh, for providing counseling services. As of June, the school's counselors have dealt with 343 cases. Uh, as you can see in the statistics, the counseling services are not limited to students and staff of the school it goes beyond the school boundaries. We have parents and people from the community reaching out for the counseling services. We also have counselors listed under the teachers category, if you can uh, visit the statistics. We have sought, who have sought support, and it is because as helpers in the front line, even counselors uh, face burnout and secondary traumas as helpers and they also need support like any other person um, requiring help. You might have also noticed the category others and this comprises of individuals who are not comfortable in disclosing the details of identification. Now coming specifically to Changanka family, the school at all times tries to put their students and staff's mental health as top priority and have provided extremely supportive environment for an individual's growth. The school counseling program at Changanka has sustained well because of the overwhelming support given by the school management, the staffs, the students and parents as a whole. The school counseling program in the school focuses in, on various areas of psychosocial support, mainly it's categorized into three dimensions. Um, as you can see in the diagram, we have three approaches, the universal approach, the selective approach, and the indicative approach. Based on the situational analysis done in the school, the school identifies areas which are more considered important comparatively to others. As you can see, the universal approach focuses more on the larger population of the school, uh, involving the whole school, like teachers, students and other staff members whereas in the selective approach we 
um, identify students who are into moderate risks and requires uh, support and other services. And when it comes to indicative approach, there are the students are comprising of high risk students who need immediate support and might also require referral to other relevant agencies. Now, prior to pandemic, uh, in the universal approach, we have um, done anti-bullying um, day observation. We have also focused on World Not No Tobacco Day and other awareness activities, even parenting programs. And uh, when it comes to selective, uh, we have tried to identify students coming from uh, different backgrounds who need more support in terms of uh, financial or psychological support or academical support. And uh, also in Indicative, we have tried to refer students to other agencies like uh, JDWNRH and NCWC, BNC for further uh, support because that falls into specialized category. As you can see in the table here, uh, the layers are divided into four different um, modes. Like in the general population affected by any crisis or any situation, we try to see if basic uh, services and facilities are provided or not. If the basic services are provided and they require further support, then we uh, look into the moderate level. Uh, following, if uh, they fall into layer 4, severe psychological problems, then as a counsellor, I am not... Uh, it be goes beyond my limitation. So we seek uh, support from psychiatric department or if it's related to addiction, then we'd refer them to BNCA for further rehabilitation and um, treatment. And if it's uh, related to any child protection issues, we seek support from NCWC who have been really willing to support us anytime now. Uh, after the COVID-19 situation came into the picture, Changanka family has formed a tax force, tax force team comprising of school management, health committee, um, then we have the counsellor and disaster management team. Uh, this team basically focuses on planning and implementation of guidelines in response to COVID-19. The school understands that in order for stable mental health or psychological uh, normalization, it's very important that the basic needs and preventive measures and, and services are placed. Hence, Mochangangka has always tried to put that as the top priority, as I mentioned earlier. And moreover, as Changaka is an inclusive school, we have always tried to implement services with equality and equity even when it comes to psychological support. The school has installed sufficient washing stations and marked routes and placed in measures for phys uh, physical distancing. And informed about immediate referral of the students or staff uh, if there's any psychological, uh, psychosocial support needed. Uh, as you can see in the picture, the ratio of the students to TAPS, uh, we have also tried to see if it's sufficient. Lah. So we have 148 students as of now for class 10 and we have 150 TAPS. So the total number of TAPS and the total number of students key ratio is 1 is to 1. That means one child is getting one TAP for washing their hands. Lah. We have also tried to put in um, different measures for physical distancing. So each uh, teacher stays uh, with the child during lunch breaks, even during uh, recess times. The recess times are also limited and it is uh, differentiated uh, with group A and B, which makes it easier for the school to maintain distance. Meanwhile, as the school has resumed for class 10, Risk and vulnerability mapping questionnaires and screening assessment has also been already circulated to see if there's any need of psychosocial support and services required by the students and um, staffs that we are not aware of. After the compilation of the data, we are going to seek further support uh, for the students uh, depending on the level of risk they are falling into. Uh, the restorative programs are also in place. As you can see, we have started with relaxation techniques, coping ac activities, and it's all been initiative to normalize the situation and uh, positive psychological well-being. 
um, having mentioned all the support placed for mental well-being of the whole school, Changonka is always open to new ideas and um, innovations and suggestions in the best interest of the of the staff and students. I fully acknowledge that it wouldn't have been possible for the school school's counseling program to function to its fullest potential without the support from the school management, students, staff, and teachers and other stakeholders. Now, having talked about what have we have been doing till now, there's always a question on my mind when it comes to mental health. The question is, what if? And whenever I hear about mental health, it links with that what if, stating that what if we did not have stigma in line to mental health? What if people saw mental health as a normal um, visit, visiting of hospitals, like when you have diabetes, you go to hospital for your regular checkups. Uh, if I give you an example, if you look back uh, on your sick days and you call your um, par parents or your boss or anyone for that matter uh, to tell, you, tell them that you're sick and you tell them that, I think most of us would choose to see that I have a kidney failure or a heart disease rather than saying I have depression or to say that I'm into panic attacks. So if you have chosen kidney uh, issues or diabetes, when I ask you this question, then we are, we are suffering from stigma. And it's something that all of us need to look into because this stigma has been creating a difficulty for people to seek support. Most people, even when they are into um, such mental is issues, fear that they might be stigmatized and uh, uh, resort in not seeking help, but staying home and you know trying to cope with it. But sometimes uh, the coping strategies might not be in a position to um, get them through with the mental illness that requires more specialized help like medication from the hospitals or treatment programs. So as I end this session today, I would like to urge that if there's something that's bothering you at this moment or if you have seen somebody being bothered about it, please seek support. And if you're in Thimpu, we have our own Tumde numbers. These are the numbers. And you can always reach out to counselors. We also have a national uh, mental health team headed by Dr. Tsenchu. And they also have their numbers. La. So you can call in any of the numbers and we'll be here to help. La. So with this, thank you so much. La.